And he is a very good boy here. He instantly, and with full commitment, boogies with his hindquarters and carry, gets himself right under to carry me the moment I add weight. And when we get into sections, especially section seven of the syllabus, um, we'll learn exactly how to teach it to the boys with our butts. We have to assume a couple things here. We're assuming that he under, he hears the aid and complies. He hears, hears, understands, acknowledges. And for that, we also have to assume that the riding is correct. And for the riding to be correct, the position and the aids have to be correct. We're going to talk about this in detail in section seven and eight. But I want to give you this document right now, which is a cheat sheet for the natural aids. You can start looking ahead and look in your library at your own, your own books. And this cheat sheet about the position. There's three, three main things. The, the, the functions of the seat are as ballast cargo, it becomes paramount, critical, crucial for engagement, a sensory organ, my butt flesh and the flesh of the backs of my thighs is, my, is a brain that I interpret the goings on of the hindquarters. And the third function of the position seat is a pan scale, which means that I can either, I can be loading the right, hip, right side or the left side. And that would be for turns and curved lines, which we're gonna talk about in the section on turns and curved lines, but also in much more depth because curved lines are like 90% of riding. Getting that right is so important. And that's section two of the syllabus. So anyway, we're assuming the aids are right and we're assuming the position is right. And for this discussion, I want you to really think about the rider's position as ballast cargo and as a sensory organ. What do we feel? And the seat as a sensory organ develops into being as transmissive and conductive of motion and information as a horse. So the seat as a sensory organ is as, is, um, and so with that fleshy sensory organ, you need the rider needs to make sure that the load is carried level and that it is moved by the upper joints first, that the motion comes from the upper joints and not below the upper joints. The seat has to be able to discern this. What you should feel is him carry you with his uppermost joints of his hindquarters. You need to stop and feel with your buns, with the meat of your butt, uppermost joints. Now he might just push you off with his hamstrings or tip you forward very subtly or maybe slightly shift you off of his initiating hindquarter. But this is where the riding starts. He has to carry you your step. Now, if you're teaching or you're training others, explain this to them very clearly, but your eye has to get tuned too, and it will. So observe here how that the horse's motion is initiated from in this case, his right hindquarter starts his march. And we can tell that it's hindquarters involved because the stifle advances, that he's not just pushing with his hamstrings. The instruction that they're supposed to do is that he has his own desire to advance the load. Shifting or pushing the load forward is not the same as advancing the load is carrying the load. So in a correct stride, a horse deliberately carries the load to the next stride point. Please 
concentrate your mind into this because when we get this from the start, everything starts to work. Now, next we're going to talk about, we're going to review the definitions of carrying power, thrust and pushing force, and engagement. Because those are the things that we need to have happening. And so we're going to look at those. Okay, this is that they feel what the uppermost joints of his hindquarters are doing. Are they the responder? Are they the motor? Or is he using a part of himself that's below that? We want the uppermost joints. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about carry, thrust, engagement, and the definition of forward. But go practice. Go sit on a horse right now. What does he do on the way away from the mounting block? Okay.